I'm trying to find an alternative approach to improvising. One that's going to help me play something melodic and confident, whatever the chords are. Whether it's a three chord rock jam, a four chord pop song, a soul tune with perhaps a couple of jazzy corners in it, or a jazz standard with a ton of chord changes. I want the same process, the same approach to get me through and really play with understanding of the song, but without overthinking it, without overcomplicating it. We're starting with Sweet Home Alabama because it's very simple, but also kind of challenging. Then we're going to move on to Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix, which is kind of almost the same chord sequence, but a little bit more sophisticated. Then we'll move on to something by the Beatles, because they got a lot of cool chord changes. Then we'll probably do something by Stevie Wonder. Then we're going to move on from there towards more and more kind of jazz related harmonies. So if the goal is to eventually play jazz using this approach, why are we starting with something like Sweet Home Alabama? Well, it's so simple that its simplicity is actually the challenge because the chords demand to be treated melodically. Uh, check out Adam Neely's video about this song. It's actually kind of weirdly more sophisticated than it sounds, but the three chords are just ultra simple. The three chords, the three main major chords that you get in every song, really in every kind of music. 99% of the songs you'll ever play have these three chords in. So if we learn to deal with this under the scrutiny of this very like country feeling song, then we're going to be in a really good place to start for dealing with every other kind of music. This is not going to be an authentic lesson in how to play this song like the original. There are other videos for that. We're just using the song as a vehicle for developing as improvisers. How are we going to approach this? Well, I'm going to break the whole course down to three steps. Step one, don't think about scales. Scales are essential for developing your technique, but we can't rely on scales and theory alone to make us improvisers. There has to be a more intuitive way. Step two, do always be aware of the chords you're playing over. That's something that we sometimes don't do and it will be a big challenge, but think of all the other things you have to be aware of when you're playing aware of the drummer's counting, aware of when the singer's coming in for the next verse, and knowing what chord you're soloing over is one of those things. It will be hard, but we're gonna do it step by step and become better at being aware of what the chords are. Step three, always practice in position. The guitar's an amazing instrument, but it's really illogical, and it will get in our way all the time. And the only way we can really make sense of it and let our ear guide us is by limiting ourselves to a small space of the fingerboard, mastering it, learning all the music that happens there, and then moving on and practicing the other positions. There are five of them. Yeah, it's a big job, but remember all the same things will happen in all of the songs. So once you've mastered a position, it's there forever. It's like riding a bike and it will work on every song. And then there's five of them to go. So if this sounds hard, it is but it's gonna work and it's gonna be practical and it's always gonna be there for you. So let's get going. So let's go through the process of practicing in this way. We're gonna choose a position first. I'm gonna choose the position between the seventh and the 10th fret. You might have your own name for this position, but let's find out what it means by looking at where the chords are. The chords of this song are D, C, and G. So there's the D chord in this position. It's a G shaped D chord. If you don't play that voicing already, I recommend it. It's really, really useful. The next chord is C in the E shape. That's the basic bar chord, maybe one of the first chords we learned. The next chord is G in the C shape. Once again, really good voicing. So can you see I'm not moving my hand? I'm in position. Here we go. Get used to how that feels, but also get used to how it looks. See where all the notes are, because what we're gonna do first to practice improvising is just improvising using the notes from the chords. Now, when we do this, you have to be prepared for it to sound pretty square, pretty boring. Don't be afraid to sound boring. When you're really getting going and you're really playing a solo, it's not gonna be boring, but we're doing this to learn where the notes are. So let's have a go. So we're gonna play first of all notes from D, look. And then C. 
G D C G D C G D C G Right? So I'm literally just kind of navigating my way around the guitar. I'm not trying to play anything rhythmic yet. We're going to get onto that in a second. So if you're confused as to where these notes are, have a look at the chord voicings that you just played and then see if you can use your ear to find out where some of the other notes are. Let's do it together. So let's start on D. Look, here's the D major chord tones. Can you see that some of those, well, most of them are in the chord voicing, but also some of them aren't because we don't have 10 fingers on each hand, you know? Uh, so in other words, we have to learn a few extra notes that fit. You could call it an arpeggio, but we're not performing it like a classical arpeggio. All we want to do is know where those notes are and be really confident of them. So one more time, D. <laughs> Sounds really square on its own, right? We're going to do the same with C. Play the chord first. Always play the chord first because that's going to tell you where most of the notes are. You could stretch up to there if you want. Even though it's out of position, obviously, if it's the only way to play the note, you have to go out of position. So it's not an absolute hard rule to stay in position. We're just trying to stay in position as much as possible. We're trying not to chase the music. We're trying to let the music come to us. The next chord is G. Let's play the notes there in the voicing. There's one there, isn't there? It's the fifth. The idea is not to memorize these visually like you're used to memorizing a scale shape. The idea is really just to remember the shape of the chord when you play it and then let your ear do the rest. That's what we want to get to. So don't be annoyed if this takes quite a long time to remember because these are going to be in every song, as I keep telling you. So once you got it, you're never going to lose it and it's always going to be there for you. Now we're going to put the backing track back on and we're going to start playing more rhythmically. So here we go. So I'm just putting a bit more rhythm into it. It's still just basic chord notes, right? But now we're getting to feel like we can use them when we want to. So you can do that for ages until you feel comfortable where all those notes are. Don't worry if it takes a long time. The next stage is that we're going to allow ourselves to play other notes that link together the notes from the chords. And that's when you really begin to start playing melodies. What is a melody? Well, a lot of the time it's just tension and release. It's going from one place to another and, and, and discovering what it does on the journey. So now we're creating a journey between chord tones. Let's try it. Here we go. That got kind of folky, didn't it? So once again, that process can take a really, really long time. And you'll discover all of the little ways that you like to do it. And that's kind of the point. You're developing your own style as well. Now, you might be thinking like, hang on, what scale is all of this using? It's the three chords. I must be able to use a scale to improvise over this. The thing is, yeah, you probably can. Maybe you've worked it out already. But I don't really know what scale this is. I think there's a couple of different options and I'd rather not think about it. I'd rather think, instead of just thinking about a scale as something I can noodle around, I'd rather think, where am I now and where am I going and how can I get there? And if you end up using bits of a scale, if you end up using bits of pentatonic, bits of blues, bits of major scale that you've practiced, great, that's all good. 
but don't let that confine you to one pattern. So now, what do we do next? Now we can kind of play single notes around it. It might still feel like it's a bit dull and you can't do any of your riffs. So let's think about like adding some more guitaristic vocabulary into this process. Bends, right? Where can we find the bends? Well, a bend is just starting a note too low and then bending up to the note you want, isn't it? If we want to bend, for example, over the D chord, you've got that note there. How do we find that as a bend? Well, look, same note. So maybe let's find a few others, right? So that note there, that works over the G chord, doesn't it? So we can go for that note. What about C? Well, that note is C itself, isn't it? So we could go to get up to that note. So that's already a couple of good ones. We could even play a bend that works over a C chord here. So let's try to put them together. Here we go. So there's just a couple of bends that live in that position. And every other position you're going to practice is going to have its own selection of cool bends in it. Just like it does when you're doing a pentatonic thing, right? What can we do next? What's another good bit of guitar-y vocabulary? Well, what about Hendrixy double stop? <laughs> type of fills. They sound really great over country music, but they also sound really great in soul music. So what we can do is get a little vocabulary that work over all three chords just in this position. And then whenever you're in that position in any song, they're there. You could do them and you know where all the good ones are. Let's think about something that's unique to this song, which is that the piano part plays quite a lot of chromatic fills. So let's think about how we can play some of those just in this position. Again, remember that that's one reason why we're not talking about one scale that we can play around because it's bits of lots of stuff, isn't it? And that can include some chromatics. So a chromatic that sounds really cool is just chromatically sliding up to the major third of every chord. Like, if that sounds like theory to you, don't worry, we're just gonna learn where it is. Whether you know the name of it or not, doesn't matter. So for example, So I'm finding the major third of each chord, which is D, and then C, and then G. Yeah, so look. If you do it slowly and out of time, it sounds rubbish, doesn't it? But if you play it in time, you suddenly get that kind of jaunty sound that the original has. And that is going to come really handy for jazz or more jazz-like music as well, where chromatics don't just happen at random. Chromatics are always there, like I was saying before, to get you from somewhere to somewhere else with this feeling of tension and release. I don't want you to overthink too much. What I'm trying to do is give you these little tools and all you need to do is play them a few times, know where they are, know what they feel like, and most importantly, know what they sound like and let your ear guide you. What's really important is that we don't think, oh, I know something over D here. Oh, I know something over C here. I know something over G here. You see what I'm doing? I'm kind of jumping around because that's all I know in terms of the uh, chord positions. What we need to do is we need to know everything everywhere. Now that sounds like a big job, but we're breaking it up into manageable pieces. So the problem with the guitar is that we have too many options, but no logic. Think about a piano. You've got exactly one way to play each note, but they're all laid out in this perfectly logical manner. On the guitar, we've got loads of ways to play each note on different strings, but they're laid out in this really funny way, mainly because of the funny tuning between the G and B strings. It's a nightmare. It's not your fault. It's the guitar. It's hard, right? But 
the way we can get around this is by getting to know each position and letting our ear guide us with the help of some muscle memory of having played around that position loads of times, knowing a few scales that are going to help your fingers navigate things, not necessarily your brain, but your fingers. And then we're going to add more and more harmonic tools that we're able to improvise over to each position. It's time to learn some other positions, isn't it? So let's move up to the next one. I'm going to do this real quick because really it's up to you to do this learning on your own. We were here, weren't we? So let, remember it's D, C, G, D, C, G, just those. Let's move up to the next position. The next position's here. We've got D, C, G. So the same process of price, go through all of the same steps. So we'll be going to be going... This, you can hear the song behind those chords, can't you? The way I'm just kind of very simply laying them out in terms of the line. Then work out where your bluesy bends are. Then work out where your cool licks are. All just there and spend ages on it because you're going to do it again and again in other songs. Next position. We've got D, C, G. Yeah. So we're going to play things like... idea and then what about well, where are we going to go next we're going to play d c g. in fact we're going too high let's do it down here d c g we've gone down an octave now so I don't want you to memorize these visually. That's not what the homework of this exercise is. The homework is to feel so comfortable with each position that you don't need to think about it. You don't need to memorize it. So you need to spend a long time on each one. This is a big task. Um, we've got one more position to go. That's here. D, C, G. All the scales you know will also exist in these positions. So your scale practice has not been wasted. The, the point is that chords come first, scales come second. That's the way I want to think about it. And here's the most important tip that I can give you that works wonders for my playing and my ability to feel comfortable on stage improvising. And that is to sing along with what you're playing. It is not about showing off how good a singer you are. I'll sing completely out of tune, doesn't matter. The main thing is you're connecting your ear with what you're playing. If you can hear it, you can sing it. And if you can sing it, you can hear it. For example. Have a go at it. It's not as hard as it sounds and it's really fun. Even if you don't think of yourself as a singer, uh, you are now. You've been practicing this song for ages, you've been doing all those things, you've been practicing all the different positions. You might be thinking, man, I'm so bored of these chords now. Well, there's a couple of things we can do about it. First thing is change the key. We have to be able to do this in all keys as well, remember, because you might find a ton of songs with similar chords in different keys. You might find a singer who wants to play a song in a different key. So pick a random key, make yourself a backing track just like I have, and practice those positions. Remember, the positions are going to move to different places, but the positions are going to be the same. Everything's going to be the same. All your bends are going to be in the same place. You haven't lost anything. All you need to do is re-navigate the fretboard, right? And you have to practice the process of doing that so that when you get on stage and someone says, ah, we'll do this song in B. Uh, it's not good enough for the singer. We need to change key. Then you're immediately able to go, okay, cool. B. Well, there's a chord there. There's a chord there. There's a chord there. I can do it. That's all right. Um, so that's really important. Once you've practiced in a few different keys, it's time to move on to the next song. And that's when we're going to start adding new harmonic tools into our repertoire 
For example, the next song is going to be The Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix, which is kind of the same chord sequence as this, but with a couple of extra things. And those extra things, I haven't just chosen at random. It's going to be a song with a couple of extra chords that feature in a million other songs. So we're going to slowly but surely build ourselves a palette of all of the most commonly used harmonic tools. And once we can do them in all the positions, and once we can hear them and react to them, then we don't have to think about any of the theory. We can just play because we've been there before. And that's a really exciting place to be. And that's where I want to get to. So join me and let's learn some more. See you next time. <laughs>